I remember growing up as a young boy, and you'd find your brother's Playboy stashed away, right? And you just felt like, wow. Like, you just, you, you had discovered something so naughty, so evil, so... Uh, I can't tell you the last time I even saw a Playboy on the shelf. I, I, you know, they used to have them, like, at the airports or whatever, in the, in the Hudson bookstores or the newsstands. And, like, the little folder covering yeah, right? it. Yeah, right, they kind of covered it all up. And then I think, uh, Chris will probably know... But I think they went away from nudity for I don't I don't know what they do. And it was more like they did kind of like Instagram models, really. Yeah. And it was more like a Maxim magazine. Yep. And I that's when I just whatever because I always just read Playboy for the pictures. But the uh, I, like I don't know what they're doing now. But apparently, they now have a guy on the cover that's coming out. Have you seen this? I have not actually seen this but uh i know what we're going to be talking about this here and a, i'm very uh oh this is it, it's a huh? video cover how do they do that, that? Oh. i can't that's so, a guy huh? i don't even understand how playboy works anymore but um, they're, they're, my, he's, my question he's moving. is <laughs> who is the tog target audience for this who who is playboy trying to sell right. this to yeah, right this, this advertising is... people actually consuming this product what is what is the lure yeah. of this? So this is, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the monitor over here and watching this thing, because this is the first time I've seen it. Uh, and this is one of those examples of you get woke, you go broke. Yeah. Because no, this will be, nobody gives a rat's ass about this prissy dude prancing around in a bunny suit. Not, at least not Playboy's target demographic. You're no. right. So, you know, if you've never read... Straight men do not want to see no. that. No. That's that's who Playboy's demographic is. Right. So historically, Playboy had the articles. They, I mean, great articles, right? I mean, so they th say. So they say. I mean, I, you know, the great articles. Uh, actual. I mean, you know, they they would feature authors like Kurt Vonnegut. I mean, like thinkers in, in their, you know, and then they would have interviews in there, and then they would have jokes in there, and then they would have little things that you know, trivial kind of things, and cartoons that were crude. And there were women, and there was a centerfold, and strategically placed staples. And now there's this. What is this? Your Halloween costume. <laughs> that's what that's going to be. I bet you that dude weighs like what a buck fifteen, like that. Like that's a diminutive man right there, prancing around. And you're right. I'm like, what is the point? Now I know most people out there are going, "What difference does it make? It's Playboy. Nobody cares." Um, but but yes, it does matter because at the end of the day. This is where culture is, and, and everything runs downstream from culture. So, so your politics run downstream from culture. When you normalize this, when you take something that is mass-consumed, like a historical uh, you know, thing like Playboy that's been around forever, when you take that and you launder it and you pander to the progressives in this regard, and you, you normalize that, it's bad. I mean, look at Maryland. Like, right, that's, look, at, look at Donnie T right there with his Playboy. I don't know if you've read it. It's fantastic, quite, quite honestly. But, I mean, you got Maryland and just so much history there. And now you're just going to be like, let's just put a little prissy dude on there. It's an avalanche when you, when you talk about the culture, right? Because at first we had like the Target transgender bathroom deal. And look at how far that thing ran, yeah. right? Like it was just one store that said, we're, we're going to allow basically men to go into women's bathrooms. And now the last Olympics, we just had a man competing. Right as a woman and then the UK study came out and they're like actually even lowering testosterone levels <laughs> this this guy still had an advantage over the rest of shocker. the women wow shocker right it, you eventually i think you eventually get there yeah well you do I, I okay hope so, so, at for, least. so for, for, for this it, it's and, over and, so this is this is why this kind of thing matters because when you do that when you change culture to this degree like you remember when AOC and her little crew came out with the Green New Deal. And we were like, okay, that's like something that a fifth grader wrote with a crayon. Like, it made no sense. You're talking about farting cows and trains to Hawaii and getting rid of all combustion engines and a $90 trillion overhaul of, of retrofitting buildings. And now they're, they're doing it. Like, they've written an infrastructure bill. They want to spend, you know, trillions of dollars to do this. It, so eventually you take the most asinine things culturally and now it starts playing out in our day-to-day -day life, right? 
So if you normalize this, guess what? Uh, you start you start trying to normalize every area of um, how we think of sexuality, how we think of masculine roles. And I'm not saying you should get your definition of masculinity from Playboy. Do not misinterpret what I'm saying. But you start you start to negate those norms, and it becomes a problematic thing. Uh, and it already is a problematic thing. It already. Is.